how connected the spiritual world is to our well-being and our mind and our life and interested in our lives and what we're thinking and that we're reminded every day how amazing life is. Every day we're reminded how precious life is and that if we care for life, then prayer is an important part of it. And so now I, I make it a regular process of making sure that prayer is an active part of my life and I hope you will too. And it may not change what's happening in court. Remembering, when you go to court, as we strip down and show that they are neither there by the authority of, of ecclesiastical law, they're certainly not there by their own rules and civil law, and that they're nothing but liars, thieves, pirates, mentally insane. At the end, all that we'll see is them for what and who they are. Well, I guess it leaves me with... with, with an update of where we are with the last thing tonight just to talk about is the update on the canons and the progress. Because I know that there's been some frustration for a number of people who may have listened to some of the audios that I have been having with a number of you on the development of law and thinking, where's this heading and is this some moving feast? Administrative law and canons of ministry of law is an absolutely fundamental pillar of making sure that the 22 books of canon law stand the test of time. It's not merely repeating what people have written even 100 years ago, 200 years ago, or the greatest quote-unquote legal minds have written as to what administrative law is. It is to understand exactly and precisely what gives ecclesiastical, sorry, administrative law, its power and effect, and why and how. Now, in the last few weeks, and certainly over the last six or seven weeks, we have continued to reveal this mirror between the private law being really ecclesiastical law and the public being the civil or commercial law, that they're two sides of a coin, two sides of a mirror, the yin and the yang in their system. And what we've been doing, what I've been doing, is going back to the grassroots of this to understand the processes, the customs. The classic example, and we've said this now repeatedly, but the realisation, even though judges, lawyers, prosecutors are wholly ignorant of their own system, the sacrament of penance on the private side is the process that underwrites every single court procedure. Every single court procedure. And we've proven it in the roles of the prosecutors. We've proven it in the three parts, in the way that the three acts of the play unfold. The accusation, the confession, the satisfaction or the absolution. That process mirrors exactly what happens on the public side. Exactly. So understanding how that is applied right across the different customs of private law, sacraments of private law, whether one takes an oath, whether one uh, entrusts and establishes a trust, whether one sets an affirmation, whatever the core and important procedures of, of our society are, key turning points of our society, we are establishing a, a strong impregnable knowledge of that which will be reflected in the canons. So I know it's been frustrating and for some it might appear that we've been on some esoteric theological journey but the proof of it and the reward of it is when you see the canons of administrative law come up onto the system in the next few weeks what it will reflect is the clearest insight into the existing nature of administrative law and the true nature of administrative law. How administrative law functions in all systems, how it functions in their systems. The who, what, where, why, when. All of that will be revealed. And that is a gift to you, to me, to our children, to future generations. Let the law be transparent. Let it be clear. The 
golden rule is easy to say. The golden rule in the sense that all are equal under the law. No equivocation. All are equal. Easy to say. Commandments. Easy to say. Modern life, modern living, modern challenge requires a little bit more finesse. Yes, the Romans, before they created millions of laws across the world, the Roman cult system, by the way, yes, the Roman pagan system had in the forum the 12 tablets, the 12 uh, rules, sets of rules of law of Rome. And yes, so the codes of Hammurabi and other systems kept it very simple. The 613 commandments in the Bible, relatively simple. But when the canons are finished, and they will be finished very soon, they will be a resource, a touchstone. So I finish tonight by saying, please consider the prayer. Please consider it as being part of your life. For whatever frustration you feel, whatever anger you feel, any doubt you feel, please consider some of the prayers that are listed on One Heaven. Please pray for others. Please make it part of your life. And above all, don't give up hope in reading and learning and knowing who and what you are. That's something they can't take away from you. No one can guarantee that your life will be free of problems. No one can guarantee. I can't guarantee that for myself. But at least you can continue to learn. For every day that you're here, you can continue to learn on who and what you are. So when you do say, we, the divine immortal spirit, you know exactly who and what you are. And you can represent the divine as you've been asked to do, pleaded to do. Bring the divine back to the law. Bring it into these dens of thieves and insane people and end this system that has been unchallenged for hundreds of years. End it so we can see the law restored. Thanks very much and look forward to your questions. Thank you. Now, Terry, uh, can you hear us? Uh, Terry said that might Hi, be having yes. storms. Oh, there you oh, go. Hi. Yeah. Oh, I can. All right. I was muted on uh, both. Uh, I have had my phone muted there on two different ways, so I had to get unmuted real quick. All right. Yeah, we've got some good questions here on the chat, and it's going to be covering, of course, uh, a wide variety of questions here, but um, I think that was uh, very very good about the uh, prayer. So can we get started on the chat first? And uh, again, those of you on the phone lines, if you press star 8, put yourself in the question uh, and answer queue, we will get to your question in the order that you are uh, doing the star 8. So you go right in order. Um, all right, Frank. Um, would you please explain how the bonding process for a court case works? How they set up a bonding? Okay. Yeah. Right. All negotiable instruments are on the private side indulgences. For an indulgence to work, it must begin with a, a prayer and a cause and then finish with a um, a uh, form. So, sorry, form of action, then a cause of action. So the form, the the original uh, creation of a writ, a summons, an arrest, is the beginning of an imperfected indulgence. At that point, in their system, they can create the first form of, of bond. So you have bid bonds, performance bonds, and the bonds are used and in their system as, as claimed underwriting at through the three stages. There are typically three bonds. There's typically three stages of the court case. 
So the first one that they can produce, from my understanding, is a uh, bid bond. That is connected to the uh, paperwork that is used to issue the uh, summons or the arrest warrant. So what what we are unable at this point to do in this system because they simply refuse to follow their own rules is complete the uh, indulgence by enjoining it to a perfected indulgence. Now, the prayer I issued out a couple of weeks ago, uh, which was we, the tribunal of uh, body, mind, spirit, and I do not recognize you, I do not recognize you, and so on, that was a perfected indulgence, auricular indulgence. So that really enjoins the matter to that perfected confession and absolution. And we should technically be able to complete their paperwork. But of course, they don't even know how the system works. At the moment, the bonding process is extremely vague. I've, I've seen people getting the references of their court cases up as QCIP numbers. I've seen them uh, getting references to that somehow um, through the system. But the level of knowledge of that, to my knowledge, is literally in the hands of maybe one or two per courthouse and the rest are just performing clerical procedures where they don't even know what they're processing. They're just processing cases, logging into Windows, they wouldn't even think about the fact whether they connect up to a public trustee system. They wouldn't even know. In fact, most of them wouldn't even care. So that's the bonding process um, that's going on behind the scenes. I'm sorry that's a, a little bit higgledy-piggledy there. Have I answered that question? Terry, do you think I've answered that clearly or not, or do I need to keep going? No, I, think that, well, I, I think that's pretty good. I, you know, it's still, like you say, uh, we discovered a lot of that process, but they uh, there's a lot that we don't know uh, regarding those issues and, and both sides of that bonding process. But they are looking possibly uh, uh, describing a little bit how that's tied to assess the case. Uh, that's still part of the um, bonds that they're doing on the, on the well, other side? Yeah, the assess the case are the in their system, they're the master of counts that they go back to. So there are three Sester Ks. One is never traded. That's the Sester K that's created effectively using a sole assurity. There's a Sester K with the bank, which is the commercial. And then there's the Sester K, um, which actually they treat yeah, as your commercial account. And then there's a Sester K, which is the private, which is your name. So... Uh, when the court case comes, the matter is brought from the private and then sh switched into the public. And in that process, that's part of the magic in terms of perfecting charges against your public sister K, which you've got to understand that when a baby is born in their system, they're issuing bonds at birth when they've salvaged what they, on the private side, they've salvaged the original sin they are writing these bonds of millions. I've heard in, in some cases that they are billions of dollars, these bonds. And they're publicly traded. In Chicago, in America, there is a couple of firms, apparently, that their, their job is to actually perform the trade on, on birth certificates, on the birth of babies. And these underwrite enormous bonds, enormous bonds that underwrite the, the production of money in the treasury. One of the things they want us to always believe is that they create money out of thin air. How often have you heard that? Oh, they create money out of thin air. They want you to believe that. They want you to believe that money is created out of thin air. Why? Do they That's really they want you to be, know they that? Be, yeah, they want to be liable or accountable for what they're doing on the, the private trading side internationally. Exactly. Mm -hmm. do, do you really think that they want to, for people to find out that Really, all financial instruments are underwritten ultimately on bonding of us as not just slaves, but bonding of our souls? Of course they don't. Nope, they don't. 
They okay. do not want that. 